What's up guys? So today I want to try to do a quick video. Um, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to address the question that I get asked, uh, most on here on social media. Um, you know, anybody that's watched any of my videos seems to want to know which machine I recommend the FK iron Spectre Zion or the Cheyenne Hawk pen and why. So I'm going to cover, uh, how I feel about both of these machines and, um, you know, go through a little, uh, little rundown of the pitfalls that I've had while using the, these machines and putting hundreds of hours on both of them. Um, of course, as always, this is unsponsored. Um, none of these companies have any contact with me. Um, and I'm giving you my honest opinion and it's just my opinion. So you can take it or leave it. So let's, uh, let's talk about the specs of each one of these machines and I'm going to start with the Spectra Zion. So this machine retails for $650 Canadian, $655 US, um, up to 1022 volts is what's recommended for it online. Um, by the suppliers of the machine. Although FK irons in the past has said, run it to however high you want to run it. Um, it comes with a 3.2 and a 3.7 millimeter adjustable stroke. Um, and it's a fully adjustable give. Um, it's got the ratchet system um, and it comes with an inch and a quarter grip. It weighs uh, 270 grams. So a little on the heavy side for a pen, um, but those are the specs on it. Next, the much older uh, Cheyenne Hawk pen. Uh, this retails for $840 uh, Canadian, so almost the same, $650 US. Uh, 5 to 13 volts is the running range. A 3.5 millimeter stroke is what it comes with. Adjustable needle depth as well, not with a ratchet, with a squeaky. There you go. Um, a three point, or a, sorry, three quarter inch grip and a one inch grip are what's available for this in a non disposable. Um, and uh, it weighs just 130 grams, so half of what the uh, Spectra Zion weighs. So now on to my experience with both. Now both of these machines have their problems, okay? Um, the Spectra Zion is what I want to start with. This machine was probably, not probably, definitely the most anticipated tattoo machine ever made. Um, there were thousands of us that were on lists to get them. I own two of them, um, and those were some of the first production machines that were made um, because I was on the pre-order list. Um, so these machines were tons of hype. And uh, when I got it, I was pretty underwhelmed. I did my review after uh, quite a few hours of working with it and I felt that the machine was too slow. I felt that um, even though I liked all the options that the machine presented, um, I really couldn't reconcile the fact that it was, you know, 10.2 volts um, and just not giving me enough speed to complete my work in the way that I was used to and comfortable with. After I posted that review, I was contacted by FK Irons and Gaston directly, and I was told to run the machine as high as I want, that, um, um, you know, I would be much happier if I just turned it up and uh, went as fast as I wanted to go. So I did that. I deleted my initial review. I put up a second review um, after using it a little bit more and I was happier with it. I have to admit the machine ran um, pretty well. I was probably in the 13 volts range. Um, and what started to happen is I would start to notice at the beginning of a long tattoo, the machine was um, you know, going fast and really snappy. By the end of the tattoo, I felt like almost the feeling of the, the motor getting tired or just not running as fast, not hitting as hard, not having the same punch that it did right away, you know, after six or seven hours of use. The, it would also warm up quite a bit. Um, so even though FK Irons um, and Gaston specifically has told me and other people that you can run this machine as fast as you want it, um, I don't think that in practice that's correct. I think that this machine will probably burn out pretty quick if I was running it every day at 13 volts um, or more, you know, depending on uh, how fast you want to go. And I will say that in terms of speed, 13 volts on this is probably comparable to about, you know, nine and a half on a Cheyenne in terms of feel. Now, I don't know revolutions per minute if that is correct or not. Um, but that's how it feels while I'm working with it. 
Okay, so the pros of this machine are, you know, huge adjustability, adjustability in stroke, adjustability in, um, you know, hit and give. It's really nice, you know, to damage the skin a little bit less if, um, if you're one of those guys um, who relies on give. Um, you know, I like the ratchet, that's nice. Um, again, it's always just come down to a motor issue for me. And uh, truthfully, a little bit of a weight issue. I find this machine to be really heavy, unnecessarily so. Um, when you compare it to other pens and the equipment that it has in it, um, this machine weighs double what a Cheyenne Hawk pen does, and you will feel it after six or seven hours. Um, I've been tattooing for 20 years. Uh, my hands aren't what they were 20 years ago, um, and I like a lighter machine. I know that's not uh, the kind of tough thing to say, but I, I don't particularly care. I like a lighter machine and this one is heavy. Um, so that's reality. So um, that's been my experience with the Spectre Zion. Now, let's talk about the Cheyenne pen. So um, my biggest issue is now, always has been, uh, was in my first review, this mono plug. I think that this is probably the stupidest thing that uh, Cheyenne has ever done. It's proved itself over the years and years that this machine has been around to be unreliable. Um, it's probably the first and only thing that fails on these things. The, the, the motors are uh, pretty bulletproof as far as I'm concerned. They run strong, you know, forever. This machine that I'm holding right now has gone back for service of the mono plug. But other than that, I've been running it, you know, very hard for uh, like three and a half years probably and never had an issue with anything but the mono plug. Um, Cheyenne is currently uh, launching, it's, it's August of 2018. Cheyenne's currently working on the launch of the Sol Nova, which is the new version of this. It's like a squished down hawk pen. Um, and I have yet to see if they've continued uh, the insanity with the mono plug, um, but you know, one can only expect it's working for them, so they probably are gonna continue it, but I hope they don't. Um, in terms of my experience with this machine, um, my experience with Cheyenne as a company, um, I think that FK Irons as a company wins over Cheyenne every time because they clearly care about their clients, they clearly care about the people that are using their machines. Um, you know, I don't necessarily agree with the uh, hoarding of pro team members that, uh, you know, kind of create the hype machine that is FK Irons, but it works for them, right? Um, Cheyenne, on the other hand, um, doesn't seem to care about you and me. Um, they care about um, selling machines and, um, and that's about it. So in terms of if you uh, need to send one of these back, be prepared to wait two to three months for it to come back. Um, if it's out of warranty, which is a year, I believe, if it's out of warranty, be prepared to pay two to three hundred dollars even for a minor fix. Um, so that's a pain in the butt. Um, and in terms of which company would I rather support, ultimately, even though FK Irons is, uh, has its pitfalls to me, I think FK Irons is the company that I would rather support. Um, but that being said, Cheyenne is the machine that I would rather use. It has its problems. I wish it had an RCA cable uh, or some other uh, connector. Um, I wish that the company was a little more efficient when it came to repairs or um, dealing with people. Um, but ultimately, the options that you have with this machine, although you don't have the adjustable give, although you don't have a lot of these other things, um, you know, they outweigh what you can get out of FK Irons and the Spectra Zion for me. So, um, two different sizes of grip. I like that. I like the three different disposable grip sizes. I love the disposable grips. They're relatively cheap um, and they save you a ton of time and a ton of you know kind of effort you can just toss them away um, they make health inspectors really happy they make clients happy um, because the more people start to know about pen machines the more people start to ask questions about um, the sterility and you know how good they are in terms of cleanliness okay so um, you see many different ways for wrapping them. I've demonstrated some different ways for wrapping them. 
there is no better way than a disposable grip, and FK Irons, even though they've promised us one, has never come uh, to this point. So, um, you know, having that is a plus for me. Um, you know, all of these things taken into account, hundreds of hours with each machine. Um, I, I've probably done over a thousand hours with a Cheyenne Hawk pen in my hand. Um, I would say since I started using them, and I've done hundreds of hours with the Spectre Zion. Um, I, over time, have soured on the Zion because I don't think that it is um, a machine that long term I will be using. If you are a tattooer that prefers a lighter machine, that prefers a fast machine, um, and that feels um, encumbered by a slower, um, you know, kind of thumpier machine, which is, is what I would kind of feel that the Zion is no matter what setting it's on. It has a spongy hit compared to the snap of a, um, of a, like an Ink Jecta or a Cheyenne Hawk pen. You know, those machines have a really snappy, crisp hit for me. Um, and the Scion, you can't get that from. It just doesn't exist. Um, so I guess in conclusion, um, if you're somebody that loves FK Iron's other machines, if you like uh, the other machines that they've produced and you want to move to a pen style rotary, then the Zion is the machine for you. If you're an artist that uh, uses a Cheyenne now and is considering switching over, but you're really happy with your Cheyenne, wait for the Soul Nova. Um, I don't think that you're gonna find what you're looking for uh, in the Zion. And um, I think that uh, if you were coming from coils or you're coming from other faster rotaries um, that are out there into a, a, a pen style, my recommendation is always, it, it has always been and will always be um, the Cheyenne Hawk Pen. In terms of cost, in terms of, you know, options, in terms of uh, reliability, and in terms of what I pick up every single day and produce the best tattoos of my life with, um, you know, without a doubt, um, the Hawk Pen is, is the choice. So um, I think that covers everything that I wanted to cover. Um, I'm not trying to bash one company over another. I think that both these machines have their pitfalls, um, and I and I hope that it comes across that way. As um, you know, all I'm trying to do is be honest about what my feelings are about the machines, um, and be honest about why I feel that that way. Um, you can take it or leave it for what it's worth. Um, as always, if you want to check out my work, you can on uh, Instagram, uh, Requiem Tattoo underscore Anthony. Um, please feel free to ask any questions in the comments section here. Um, I'd love to know your input. Um, the next video that everyone gets from me will hopefully be a review of the Soul Nova. So hopefully I can get my hands on that um, when it comes out and uh, be able to put out a, a good review of that one. Um, and until then, uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I appreciate all of you. Uh, take care. Thank you.